Okay, chapter 17 of the 50 chapters in the book, God dictated to me that he titled uh, Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. Told me to type that, type that title. I said, okay. And um, knowledge that I could not possibly have. Knowledge that no rabbi today or in the history of Judaism has ever known these things. That's why the Orthodox Jews believe God dictated the first five books of the Bible, which the Jewish people call the Torah, to Moses. And uh, they might be surprised to learn he actually, the entire book is his. Every prophet, every prophet had the spirit of light upon them and God is in his spirit and he spoke to them. Because they're always giving you God's words. That made them men and divine beings. Because the spirit is a person. It's an angel. With the spirit, and he doesn't have human form and wings. His body is the spirit of God. But uh, he had uh, Isaiah write Isaiah. Malachi write Malachi. Jeremiah write uh, Jeremiah. Isaiah write... Uh, in particular, you can see it in 53. There's just too many purposes of that. Um, the, the fact that I was crushed with the disease uh, and had to agree to go into the fire refinement, which is um, it's like a boot camp for prophets, and it's very painful, emotionally and physically. But then I didn't do that with Ezekiel, who also goes to the fire refinement. The book of Ezekiel is the key to understanding 53, in particular the fire refinement, which you don't really know about until I tell you, the righteous servant Moshe. And it's written that way. It was on purpose he didn't put in the definition of the fire refinement that you find in Ezekiel. It's to make him hard as adamant, like flint. And so he will be not be dismayed by the Jewish people when he's trying to teach them God's word. And it turns out, just like the man of 53, just like King David before he became king, he was shunned, despised, and laughed at. God told him, they won't listen to you, they don't listen to me. <laughs> but I'm going to prepare you anyway. And he taught him the scripture he won't taught at the same time for the exiles. In exile. Oh, so why are they crushing you with disease? Look, if God asks you to be his righteous servant, you're not going to tell him no. In, in fact, you can't. <laughs> I mean, it would just not be a smart thing to do. <laughs> you know, Ezekiel says, a spirit sees me, and I went in the bitterness and the fury of my spirit in the hand of God. Now, you would think if you're in the hand of God, things are going good for you. Ezekiel, why are you bitter and furious? Because he would answer, I'm in the fire of fire. Hell, that's what he'd say. That's what Moses would say. He most definitely went through it. The greatest lie and deception in the history of mankind is in the Christian New Testament. The New Testament of Christianity has many statements of the prophecy of the Hebrew Bible being satisfied or fulfilled in the stories and accounts of Jesus. Not one is true. You heard me right. Not one is true. <laughs> God taught me the New Testament first. Well, we were kind of doing that in the Hebrew Bible. Never really looked at the Old Testament. God says... He it was that the next day. God said, "We we need to go to the bookstore, and you need to get a Tanakh." And I said, "What's a Tanakh?" I mean, people, I didn't know anything. I had never read the Bible, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, Hebrew Bible. I never read any of them. And that's the way God wanted it. He orchestrated my life from birth. He wanted a clean slate to teach me the matters of this book the way it's supposed to be known. Yeah, he didn't teach me anything about a millennial era or world exaltation, which is ridiculous. It is arguably the most deceptive book ever written. 
based on the billions of people who had been to see. The deceptions are written in such a manner as to keep the reader from verifying the reference prophecy. The deceptions are bolstered by the reader's belief that a Bible certainly does not contain lies and deception. The book of Matthew, which begins the New Testament, has many statements of prophecy fulfilled that are false. Either it is not prophecy, the verses and their meanings have been changed, or the prophecy is not stated in full, leaving out the parts that are not fulfilled. And rarely does he tell you the name of the prophet being referenced. The prophecy of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 and 10, is a good example. Jesus changed verse 10 of the Hebrew Bible, chapter 9, Zechariah, that's in the Hebrew Bible, from the feeding room to being executed by a room. This is what Zechariah 9, 9 and 10 says. Rejoice, rejoice greatly, fair Zion. Raise a shout, fair Jerusalem. Lo, your king is coming to you. He is victorious, triumphant, yet humble, riding on an ass, on a donkey fouled by a she-ass. This is 10. He shall banish chariots from Jerusalem, no, from Ephraim, that's the northern kingdom, and horses from Jerusalem, southern kingdom. The warrior's bow shall be banished. He shall call on the nations to surrender, and his rule shall extend from sea to sea and from ocean to land's end. And that's the prophecy. That's not what Jesus says. In the days of the prophets, invading forces in chariots for battle in the rural areas rode upon horses like police in Jerusalem and shot arrows with bows to enforce their will upon the people of Israel. In the days of Zechariah, this was the Assyrians and Babylonians. In the days of Jesus, this was Rome. Jesus did ride an ass into Jerusalem. But he did not banish the chariots and horses and arrows of Rome. And his rule did not extend from sea to sea and from ocean to land's end. Matthew says, chapter 21, verse 4 and 5. Matthew says, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto the meek, and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foal of an ass. Luke the historian wrote, Then he, Jesus, took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man. He would have been doing this. The Son of Man. That's what he called himself. I'm a son of a man. I mean, that's nothing. The Son of Man shall be accomplished. And this is the new verse 10. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on then they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Okay, the Hebrew Bible, no, no prophet said that, by the way. Zero. As all the prophets say it, mate. None. And there's more. The Hebrew Bible, Christian Old Testament, Great Scroll of Isaiah, Apocrypha, and the Pseudopigrapha are all of the possible scripture that Jesus could be referencing and not one book mentions a son of man, which means a person of mankind, a son of man, God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, a son of God, a man who is God, or any man to be delivered to the Gentiles, mocked, scourged, and put to death, a man who dies for the sins of other men, 
any man who is to rise from the dead on the third day or a man who sacrificed or made to sacrifice himself by God. You only find all that stuff in the New Testament. There's no prophets who ever prophesied any of that was going to happen. It's, it's certainly, the Hebrew Bible is not prophetic of Jesus in any shape or form. He cannot be Moshe because of the way God had Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 written. And he most certainly does not fit Isaiah 53. Not even close. I, however, did. And I can show it to you. It's, it's in these videos. I did a video on 53 with Rashi's commentary. I did a video that is expressly intended to show how Jesus doesn't fit the verses. And I, God had me type a, video, a chapter, I'm calling them videos, chapters that are on video. One on Tobias Singer and his interpretation of Isaiah 53 and his commentary. And uh, the next one at 24 was, uh, that's 21, 22, 23, 24 respectively, is uh, commentary on Jews for Judaism and their interpretation of 53. 21 through 24. You'll be tired. <laughs> and the introduction to the book is a generic look at Isaiah 53, and it's in three parts that have already been, uh, have been redone again here in the last few days. So there's plenty of 53 in there, but there's a lot of other information. How angels are created, uh, just, you know, stuff on the New Testament, Jesus doesn't have anything to do with the day of the Lord, other than he's passed his wrath in Isaiah 51. He passes his wrath to those who told the Jewish people, from the Jewish people, to those who told them to get down and walked all over them. And that would be the people who stole their book and called it their own and told the Jewish people they didn't know how to read it and attached it to their New Testament, which has got some severe problems. The Hebrew Bible consists of a collection of writings dating from approximately the 13th to the 3rd centuries BCE, before the Common Era. These books were included in the Jewish canon by the Talmudic sages of Yavaneh around the end of the 1st century Common Era, after the destruction of the Second Temple. However, there are many other Jewish writings from the Second Temple period which were excluded from the Hebrew Bible. These are known as the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. The Apocrypha, which means, this is in parentheses, Greek hidden books, are Jewish books from that period not preserved in the Hebrew Bible, but included in the Latin Vulgate and Greek Septuagint, Old Testaments. The Apocrypha are still regarded as part of the canon of the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches. And as such, their number is fixed. The term Pseudopigrapha, Greek, falsely attributed. I told you none of the original disciples of Jesus were thought to have written the Gospels. Was given to Jewish writings of the same period which were attributed to authors who did not actually write them. This was widespread in Greco-Roman antiquity, in Jewish, Christian, and pagan circles of light. Books were attributed to pagan authors and names drawn from the repertoire of biblical personalities, such as Adam, Noah, Enoch, Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Ezekiel, Baruch, and Jeremiah. The pseudopigrapha resembles the apocrypha in a general character, yet were not included in the Bible. Apocrypha or rabbinic literature. It is accepted today by Judaism and Christianity that the four Gospels are pseudopigrapha and were not written by the original disciples. 
Matthew, Mark, and John, and the historian Luke. Okay, that's the final chapter I'm going to do today. It takes all day long to upload these to YouTube, but uh, slowly but surely they'll be uh, uploaded uh, today, probably. This is chapter 18. Well, I started, uh, so I did, I did seven today. I had 10 completed yesterday, so that's 17 of the 50. The next chapter is chapter 18, Signs and Portents. This is very interesting. They're all interesting to me. They're all good. I mean, these are God's words. This is his writing. And, you know, I've witnessed him doing it. I was a part of it, a physical part of it, uh, while being in the fiber of fiber. And uh, I had no idea how tough it was going to be and what, how long it would take to change me and make me suitable for his purpose. I keep asking what can't I do? I'm putting this all on videos. I'm teaching the books. And he said, this is the way I do it. You'll come out of the fire when we get to Israel. He said, frankly, you can stay in your whole life. But he's told me Moses did. Because Moses was so angry when we first really see him as an adult. He kills a man in anger. He had a furious spirit. But at the end of his life, it says... He was the most humble man on earth. God says, you know how he got there. The fire refinement will make you humble. <laughs> uh, I don't need to be. I'm bringing the wrath and the reckoning. I don't need to be humble in my humble <laughs> opinion. You know, I don't laud myself over, over people and this and that. I was a lawyer. was pretty smart. Went to university. Texas A&M and law school. But I had to study like crazy. I'm not just one of these people who read something and you got it down. I had to read it over and over, summarize it, and uh, read it right again before the test. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm just a pretty smart guy. Nothing, no greatness in, in, in no, no possible way. I could have read the Bible, and I guarantee you, I wouldn't have gotten any of this. And if I was trying to teach the Bible, I'd probably be worse than the rabbis out there. Okay. Thank you for watching. Fucking